Today let's talk about how to build a visually successful flower arrangement. There are not a lot of rights and wrongs in flower arranging and you really should infuse your flower arrangements with your personal style. That said, if you are feeling lost in terms of starting an arrangement or you'd like to just sort of up level your weekly arrangements in your home, you might want to use this blueprint where I am addressing some common mistakes and some easy tips to help you make successful flower arrangements. Before we get started, if you are new to this channel, uh, my name is Chelsea Fuss and I am a floristry instructor at Frolic Flower School. If you like flower arranging tips and tricks and behind the scenes information about being a florist or becoming a florist, you can hit the subscribe button. So let's talk a little bit about how to make a successful arrangement. The first thing is one common mistake I see people making is they'll go to the grocery store and just dump the flowers in the vase. And aside from the technical conditioning part that you really need to do to make your flowers last a long time, um, you need to place the flowers properly in the vase. And one of the most common mistakes I see is just when you kind of have stems sticking straight up out of the vase instead of an, a very easy transition from vase to flower. And the way you do that is to have vines hanging over the edge of the vase or to to put some flowers very close to the rim of the vase. So typically I will build an arrangement in three levels. So think a first floor, a second floor, and a third floor. And I'll start by creating a base and I want to create that very low to the rim of the vase. And with that in mind, the second thing you need to think about is putting flowers in at different heights. So once you do have that base, then you will start to build a shape for your arrangement. And you really need to pay attention to the ingredients you have and take a nod from the way they're curving or the textures you have to create a shape that works with your pile of ingredients. But you want to make sure that you are placing your stems in at different heights, okay? This is just a basic principle of design. You always need varying heights, whether you are planting a garden, putting together a balcony garden, or styling props on a table. You always need uh, different heights and different shapes to make it interesting to the eye. And the third thing is actually something to keep in mind. Um, just when you're starting out, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it is something to help you if you're feeling lost. So typically we are creating at least one and a half to two and a half times the height of the vase. Sometimes I even go three and a half or four times the vase, but basically one and a half times the vase is going to be your minimum proportion, okay? So, so you want to keep that in mind when you're picking out your vase and picking out your flowers. Another thing to keep in mind, and this is a mistake I see being made a lot. <laughs> um, sometimes when people are starting out, they'll buy something like lilies at the grocery store and they'll cut them down low and they just don't really work because lilies grow really tall. And so they should just be in a tall vase that is pretty large because their blossoms are pretty large. So you need to match the scale of your flowers to your vase. And when you are picking out your flowers, if you do like this effortless garden look in this English garden style, you need to pay attention to soft flowers, okay? What are, when you go to pick out your flowers, um, which flowers look billowy or ethereal? 
which ones have a lot of texture. You know, sometimes if you can layer on different textures in the same color and similar scales, it creates a really interesting composition that is very easy on the eye. Include filler flowers and vines and grasses. Those will help create dimension and movement. And to achieve the garden style, um, there are actually some flowers that I just don't use. And they have, you know, an association for me that is more about um, a florist shop than a garden. But the association for you might be different. And, you know, I talk a little bit about this in my book, Field Flower Vase. But uh, for instance, I never use Alstroemeria, Gerbera daisy. I rarely use lilies, although I do love them, and I think that in the right context, they're lovely. And that's the thing. Every flower is beautiful, but it's about putting it in the right context, okay? So you really want your flowers to grow from your space. And so if you are creating a flower arrangement for your home, think about the colors you already love and how this flower arrangement will complement the room that you have. Another common misconception is that a flower arrangement, that all flower arrangements need to be triangles or three-sided or you know, a certain shape, and that is simply just not true. <laughs> a flower arrangement can be whatever shape you want it to be and whatever shape that the ingredients dictate it to be. A lot of times when people come to my flower workshops, they have a certain idea of what a flower arrangement is supposed to look like, and it's not supposed to look like anything except a sampling of nature. The idea is to bring a little bit of nature indoors. So try to forget, you know, what you think a, a professional flower arrangement is supposed to look like and just ex enjoy the experience of putting beautiful ingredients in a vase. And don't shy away from using herbs and fruit and weeds and layering different textures. When I teach floral design, I'm teaching in an English style. That's how I was trained. I wasn't trained in Ikebana. I was trained in an English style of floral design. So I'm layering different textures. When you're starting out in floral design, the easiest thing for you when you're shopping for your flowers is going to be to arrange in just one color, okay? One or two colors. And uh, to keep your color scheme very simple. The other thing I recommend is just being thoughtful about your container. Now, your container doesn't need to be fancy. That's the other thing. A lot of people have the idea that flower arrangements need to be in urns or expensive containers, and they really don't. They can be in special containers. For instance, I don't really like mason jars. Um, it's just not a design that I like, but I love like a vintage European yogurt jar or something a little bit more unusual, but I still like to find them at the thrift store or, you know, for not a lot of money. And it's nice to find the aged containers that maybe have a story. I used to love making arrangements in my grandmother's pudding bowls, okay? So your flowers don't need to be in fancy containers. In fact, um, if you want flower arrangements that really feel like they're kind of just growing from your space, um, I really doubt that an urn fits in most people's houses. <laughs> you know, if you like more of a casual, effortless style, probably, you know, just a casual vase will work. And I like anything from a drinking glass to a special ceramic vase made by, you know, a local artisan. But I definitely recommend checking out your local thrift shop for containers or even just looking inside your kitchen cupboard and remember that any sort of container can be watertight um, just put a little jar or a little cup inside of the container you want to use okay and arrange it that way 
So those are a few of my basic tips and tricks for creating flower arrangements at home or for clients. If you would like to learn more about becoming a florist or you are interested in learning more about sourcing your flowers, I do have a 45 minute training all about sourcing flowers. I'll put that down below. I also have a fun little checklist if you're interested in learning how to keep your flowers lasting as long as possible. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to pop your questions down below if you have any questions about your flower arrangements. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.